Is this a, what day is this? It's mail it in Friday. Yeah, well, the dude abides. This is Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O Dog on TSN 1050. All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, the dog Jeff O'Neill. Jamie Noodles McLennan. No longer downtown. No longer rocking the Boston pizza vibes. And I missed it a little bit. We had a blast yesterday. It was awesome. I, I will say one thing, Hazy B. The people, and I'm not just saying this because we work with Boston pizza, the people there were so nice. Like, if we needed a water or anything, they're they're just salt of the earth people. And thanks again yeah. for yesterday. Everything was super awesome. Love that. Amazing. Amazing. Boston Pizza, the hospitality. FanDuel was down there helping everyone else out as well, feeling, making yeah. sure everyone was in the right spirits, right? Oh, yeah. They could have easily said, look, I'm glad you guys are here and everything, but we're busy. We got a million people in here. But it was everyone Amazing. was yeah, top was awesome. Great top hospitality. Show. I'm they glad we could pull job. that off. And there were some, you know, people there that showed up. I mean, that was the, the fans that were behind us. They were all dialed in, you know. I don't was, know about uh, you guys, but my buddies were obsessed with short sleeves, no sleeves. Oh, I talked to he him kept several walking. times. <laughs> yeah, you talked to no sleeves? I oh, talked yeah. to Mark, too. You talked to Mark. No, You know what he was yeah. doing? He had the, like, grandfather thing going where he was videotaping you, like <laughs> when you were talking to someone else, and you're like, I don't know what you're doing, man. But <laughs> I was, All right, this is getting was, a little awkward, but I had a five-minute conversation, and he was standing there with that. I was like, "Is he like? Am I? Is he videoing that, or is he taking a Hang picture?" Hang on a second, I don't know. back it up. He yeah. went to talk to you and recorded the convo. No, his buddy who brought the underwear was standing talking to me, and he was videoing. And I was like, is he videoing it or just snapping a photo of the conversation? But it was great. I chatted them up both. I had a conversation with them. About three separate times after we left. And then there was a guy who looked like Rick Bushwood, and he was a beauty. I had a conversation with him mm -hmm. for a while. And Do the math. On the way out. Do the it, math. It was just. It was uh, awesome. Great people down there. He was there. from was... Hamilton. Or maybe I asked him if he was from Hamilton. That might have been offside. But I I just thought I, he came up, and we were chatting. I'm like, dude, you're from Hamilton, aren't you? I can't remember what he said because I was just kind of in my own mind. But it was awesome, like meeting up with a bunch of people. I, I enjoyed uh, being on site. We'll have to do it again at some point. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that was great. So, yeah, thanks again to Boston Pizza, FanDuel. Um, there it is. You know, I, And I got to say, everyone buzzing about, oh, how you're looking, how lean you're looking. I, yeah. I noticed you snuck in a salad that was on camera for about bit, an hour. Yeah, I thought that was a like bit a heroic, prop, too. A salad <laughs> prop. Uh, guys, that's... Be honest. I need you, to get to that point. Be honest. You loved that the salad was right in front of you for about an hour. Like, I know Tux was there. I think it was Luke's yeah. segment. The salad was right in front of you. Was that Dude, premeditated you... or what? Do you you know me well enough? Like I don't need a salad as a prop, you moron. Okay. Like, what do you think? I told the stud with the green outfit on, like, hey, do you mind uh, throwing the salad there? Like, that's the only thing I'm allowed to eat. Like, right. that's very just simple. wondering. I, people were asking. I'm I'm not yeah. personally. Oh, so there you're telling me? By yeah, the way, no sleeves has a veteran move. He had no tarp on. All he had was the leather vest. <laughs> And I saw him rip it open, go in the inside pocket, no, I'll bear everything bare, yeah, and <laughs> dig in and grab his cell phone, and then he pulled it out and started. To, like he's a legend. <laughs> oh, that guy. he looked like Iggy Pop last night. He, like, was, he, awesome. he was absolutely. Now you're telling me people asked if the a... salad was a prop. I had a couple of people ask. Oh, you didn't. There well, was a because buzz. noodles had the pizza, but noodles <laughs> would bring it up and then put it back. Where your salad was strategically placed. Dude, right. I never right did any of part of the show with the salad on the table. Yes, you That's did. A, you did. Yes, no, I did. didn't. I, I, I yes, want to say Tux I was there. I purposely, the there was thing. a triangle right where I was sitting, and every commercial break, I would put it on the seat. I never showed the salad. I'm telling you, there's pictures anyway, right, Noodles? You know, I, when, was... when Tux sat down and we all took a pick, you guys Tux are being got... idiots. I'm not in the mood today. <laughs> I'm just telling Do you. Doogie, if you could find a picture of live television with a salad showing, go for it, and I want to see it because you can't okay. find one. Someone go break it down. I we'll was, find it. 
I thought, okay, so you're right. I was the pig. I had ordered a large pizza, Great White North, for myself, and I was, you know, full well going to just bury it. We just didn't have enough time. I was mm. just taking a bite every break and whatever. The you your salad came in the five o'clock hour, I think, in the, and. I felt like it was strategically placed, like for a prop for a bit. Uh, that I will say, oh, you were eating it. It wasn't like you'd let it just sit there. Like, hey, look at me. I'm Who eating does a salad. that? Like, you were props up a salad <laughs> as a showcase. It was a salad vibe. You were waiting for someone to walk by and be like, hey, good call. Look at these guys eating. And you are re- you have a lot of self control. They're like, look it's at a the garbage side. Here. It's a <laughs> lot of self control. Uh, Doogie, anyway, it was. Doogie, it, find a pic of live television with the salad showing. I purposely put it under the table. Broadcasting 101, you don't have food out while you're doing the show. Okay. Oh, dog, I can confirm you never had it out during the show. Thank you, Just Doogie. in the photo with Darcy Tucker. So the Do- photo was true then. The photo. That's a happened. real photo. That's that a happened. real photo. Yeah. All right. So a photographic prop. It was one, <laughs> one time the salad was out. And it was it was for a picture, but thank you, Doogie. The Doogie desk was established. The Doogie yesterday. desk is uh, coming in hot. Yeah, a lot of people were were coming very excited about that. And uh, yeah, it was it was cool being down there. And you know, we were on the air, so we missed out on the whole draft and everything that was going on down at the rink. And um, <laughs> I love that McDavid called him Sam Bobrovsky. <laughs> I couldn't stop watching that. <laughs> like, that's a guy that just couldn't care less about anything. He's like, let's just go. What is it, Gary Crosby? Let's take him and Sam Bobrovsky. Who else is available? Play it. Do we have, have that? I want to hear Sam Bobrovsky. <laughs> Derek Pasternak. Who else can I take here? Yeah, we'll find it. But it's Sam Bobrovsky. But I think he was trying to talk to Sam Bennett. Or no, yeah. Sam Reinhardt. Sam Reinhardt, Sam Reinhardt yeah. and be like Sam's teammate. And then he just tossed out. Sam Bobrovsky. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's great that it's him because he's yeah. so nonchalant. Yeah, you know, like he just... McDavid kind of gives off an aura like he'd rather be almost anywhere else on earth at times. And he's just like, let's get this over with. Who do I have left? Sam Bobrovsky. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was happening last night. And then today in the NHL, hell is breaking loose. And, and we yeah. got a big hour. We got Brady Ch- Kachuk coming up later this hour. Chris Pronger coming up. Prongs will join us in an hour. Prong knows Prongs knows what it's what it's like to play in the Olympics. He was there in ninety eight, oh yeah. two, oh six, twenty ten, everything. I mean, Prongs did it all. Yeah. And I think we all believe that Brady Kachuk would be a part of that American team. And, you know, on the international level, they announced uh, I guess the the four nations cup or whatever it's gonna be called next year. Canada, US Sweden and Finland, and it sounds like you want like to explain be... that one a little more in depth, Hayes. The yeah. four nation is that just like it... to try to get people juiced up about it? Yeah, I think so, and I actually think that they've they've done a pretty good job here in terms of the way it's going to play out. So it sounds as if it's going to be played in Montreal and Boston, and every team's going to play each other in the round robin, and so you know every nation is guaranteed three games, and then the top two seeds based on points. But what I find interesting is they're changing the point system. They're okay. going from three points for a win in regulation, two points in overtime or a shootout, one point if you lose in overtime or a shootout, zero points if you lose in regulation. So not the NHL point structure. Uh, and I guess the top two teams will play the championship game, um, and it's all going to be over the course of whatever the All-Star week was supposed to be next year. So instead of a, an All-Star game, which there won't be, it'll be Canada, U.S., Finland, and Sweden, again, sounds like Montreal and Boston will be the host cities. I think that's a pretty cool idea. It's not yeah. perfect. It's not the equivalent of the Olympics. Obviously, there are teams on the outside looking in, Russia being a prominent one in that, but there's more to it than just whether or not you're going to expand right. Russia and their, you know, what's going on with them right now. But, you know, Czechia, there's a lot of really good Slovakia, good hockey countries around the world that I'm sure you could include here. But this will – mean basically the the best teams the best players north american soil and it'll be a precursor to what else they announced today which is they're going to the olympics in 26 and in 2030 i i i don't want to rain on the parade all i could think about is is i hope that rush like again this is a world problem and i get that but like best on best like Right now, Kucherov and Vasilevsky and Shesterkin and so, like some of the best players are Russian. If mm-hmm. they're not a, allowed to play in that, it, it does put a damper on it for me. I don't know how you guys feel. In terms of it, international but... hockey, 
Canada's right? number one in terms of the history. Canada's right. one. Russia's two in terms of right. the history and the so, prominent roles they've played in international hockey history, from the Summit Series to right. you know the Miracle on Ice, all that kind of stuff. And, and this is way above our pay grade, and this is life stuff, real life stuff. I hope that stuff, you know, life turns and in the next couple of years it gets back to normal there's no wars all of that type of stuff but i just the first thing i thought about is when they say best on best well you know it'll have an asterisk beside it if if russia's not allowed to be in the olympics in that yeah. situation for me i, I, I would know. think so now the russia again in the past has been in the olympics but they're not called russia you know, yeah, it's I mean, athletes of a neutral, or so whatever the hell it is. I don't know. I, so, I'm just saying Russia. You, well, yeah, but, no, I, everyone knows what it is. But right. I believe in 18, when the NHLers weren't there, Russia won, but it wasn't technically Russia, I believe. Yeah. So I, I would guess, you know, the IOC has taken a different viewpoint on Russia and, and their stance on things in the past. They'll probably be there in 26. I would assume they'll be there in 2030. Not going to be the case next year. But it's, right. it is best on best. What you're going right. to hopefully get is Canada versus the U.S. Hopefully in the final, it's Canada versus the U.S. played in Boston or Montreal. Yeah, and at so. a minimum, you're going to see a one-off of McDavid versus Matthews or whatever it's going to be in the biggest moments, uh, which is great. And it's long overdue. And, you know, they had McDavid up there. They had Matthews up there. Pedersen, Ajo representing the four, repre you know, respective countries today uh, for the announcement. And then beyond that, when you get to the Olympics, it'll be more nations represented but right. long overdue um and you know i'm i'm excited to see it return and what you're going to get now is you know years and years of mock teams and mock lines and what happens on in net and that's a big part of the conversation up here and it has been for years even though there hasn't been international right. hockey being played is who's going to play in goal you don't think you're going to have to fill out the roster in the next week or so <laughs> i i already had to talk about Get it today Get ready. Today, Let me guess, you're Hayes. Yeah. You're on Sports Center tonight discussing who's in and who's out for Canada. Yeah. Well, I, I got it, takes on that. I got, I got views. Okay. Here's a here's a take for you. Then is is uh, the guy in Pittsburgh on your team? Sid. Yes. Absolutely, he is. Be 38 in 2026. You yeah. Mean? Yeah, Olympics, I, if Olympics, he keeps yeah. playing like this, I think he'll be there. I, I say yes too. If he's like I, if he's playing the way he is today, he's a lock. Like what if he's, he's not? A lock. What if he's not? What if he? What if he's not playing like he is today, but he could still be? Like, does he make the team as some type of fourth line player if he's not playing like he is today? How does that go down? Or does he say, "I'm not going if I'm some schlep on the fourth line"? Um, I think. Hockey Canada kind of learned their lesson, I think, from like the Gretzky experience in '98, and you know, there like it was that was kind of a weird transition. Um, but I think Sid, the way he still skates and if he's healthy, I even agree. if he's not scoring at that level, I think he's a guy that if he can still skate where he is now, he's a guy that you can have further down your lineup. Yeah, I like, agree. Absolutely, you can keep him I, as a, a part of the team for sure. I also went. Like, think of where he is right now with his team. Now, it's just recency bias. Pittsburgh's on the outside looking in. You know, are they going to be a playoff team? Are they ever going to contend? All of that. This might be the dangling carrot for him two years from now, going like, I've got an opportunity to play best on best still, you know, moving forward. Because if Pittsburgh doesn't make the playoffs or they just squeak in and lose or, or you know, in the next couple of years, what is going to be his, you know, something that is motivation? That might well, be it, to make that team. I think the bigger question is, if Russia's there, will Ovechkin be there? Like, Ovi right now, I don't know if he would make a team right now. Like, I think they put him on because of who he is. You know, like, if Russia, if the Olympics started tonight. And Dude, it's awfully difficult to say, Hayes, but the answer is no. Probably not, the way he's been no. playing, the way he no. looks. You Was know? he got five goals this year? I think he's got nine now. Yeah, he's, he's moved, uh, he chipped in a yeah. couple, but he's, he's, on pay, he's only on pace for, like, 15. Yeah, you know, it's like a tough watch. Like he's fanning on pucks. He's there's a one timer's not there. He's not the same player. No, I don't know. He could return and rip home somehow. Twenty six, twenty seven. Somebody sent me a message. They guaranteed that he would score twenty six or twenty seven. I'm like, I don't know, man. I do not know. With nine right now, it's no layup that he gets twenty plus this year. No, it's not. No, not at all. Not Absolutely a layup. Not. No, no, not for We're sure. We're too far not. into the season. Yeah, for that to be the case. 
Um, yeah. So, yeah, we had that announcement today. We'll ask Brady Kachuk what he thinks about it, Chris Pronger what he thinks about it. Uh, Todd McClellan's out in L.A., which I guess they were just waiting for the break. And even though they beat Nashville the other night, this was probably done made. two weeks ago. Yeah, I exactly. think the same thing happened to Woody out in Edmonton. They won the last yeah. one, but it was like – I think what the, there's viz of Woodcroft going across talking to Dave Manson, losing to San Jose, and you could hear him. You can't hear him, but you can see him lip syncing. This might. I be think it. that was the last. Yeah, this one might be it. And Manson mm-hmm. was like, "Yep." Yeah. So yeah. as soon as he had one of those losses, that was the the writing was on the wall, and they got through Nashville, and it's gone. Yeah, Gonzo. It's, it's wild. The the coaching turnover in the league. You know. Oh, you keep talking about it the last few weeks about the NFL. But you look at the NHL, like Pierre Lebrun tweeted out a few hours ago, that makes 13 NHL head coaching changes since the end of last season. New York, Calgary, Anaheim, Washington, Nashville, Columbus twice because of the Babcock situation. Edmonton, St. Louis, Ottawa, Minnesota, the Islanders, and now the LA Kings. 13, 12 different teams. 12 teams since the beginning of last year. We're at the all-star break. What does that say, though? Like, does it say ex- expectations? Like that To me, that says expectations from ownership going, you promised me this, I expected that. Like, yeah, Are they false expectations? Under- uh, Obviously, Edmonton, people like, putting was, together yeah. bad hockey teams, looking at it, saying you should be doing better, and the teams, we've talked about it, Hayes, the league is watered down, and they're trying to squeeze every last ounce of something and put a team together. And a bunch of people are putting bad teams together and flipping their coaches because that's their last bullet. But, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I would, you're, you're right. Like, Edmonton started so bad. But you argue, like, it, it, was that Jay Woodcroft? Like, Jay Woodcroft, they might still have 16. Now, now Knobloch's done a very good job in, in some tweaks here and there. But I, I just I look at it like, is L.A. going to be a better team today with Jim Hiller running it? Or is it, do they, they need to save, they need players to play better. Obviously, it's a jolt. Instead of trading a bunch of players and, and trying to move that around, it's easy to fire the coach. That's the, the go-to yeah. move. It's fire the coach, and if that doesn't happen, now we're moving out key pieces. Well, right? some of it is a mercy firing. That happens sometimes, where you just say, I can't, we can't keep doing it. I think that happened with DJ Smith in Ottawa. Where it was like I, don't think the, I think the coach actually wants it too, Hayes. He's yeah. just like, I don't know what else to say to these guys, and... This is the end right. of the line. Like, get get me out of here. Absolutely. And I, I I have a couple of different theories on this. One, I do think it's the nature of the hard salary cap where it's, you, you like you just said, Noodles, if this isn't work, then we move other guys on. No, you don't. No trades barely happen. Like, it, it's very yeah. difficult to happen right now unless it's a guy on an expiring deal. Like we saw with Monaghan today. We'll get to that momentarily. Lindholm. To tra- like, right. you can't, if you're in LA, you can't trade Pierre-Luc Dubois right now. Impossible. No. Can't do it. Can't trade Jonathan Huberto right now. There's a number of guys in the league. You can't trade. On top right. of it, no movement clauses, no trade clauses, all that kind of stuff. So it you resort to your owner possibly saying, well, you have to do something, and it becomes right. the coach. And I also think that this could be an element of Vegas playing a role on the rest of the league and Vegas just being in everyone's kitchen, and specifically owners who have been around for a long time because – Vegas has done so much turnover, right? Like it just went from this guy to that guy to this guy. And they they put forth this front like they are freakishly trying to improve. And they will not accept anything but constant improvement and constant chasing of like cups and president's trophies and all and this. they won. And then they win. Exactly. And now I could see where other owners are like, what is going on there? Why did they uh, – you know, why did they get rid of this guy? Why did they get why rid of that guy? Why are they so guy? aggressive? Why are they so aggressive? What are we doing? Like, we've lost 14 of 16. Do you think that would fly in Vegas? Which yeah. is, again, incredible. And it's an amazing testament to what they've created in six years that I think you have long standing franchises, teams that have been around for decades with stable owners who are like, well, what are we doing? Like, yeah. Look at what those guys are doing. Like, why aren't we doing something crazy like that? And as a result, you know, coaches are, they're going through the blender. Like it's just, yeah. it's amazing. 12 different teams making coaching changes. And there's a number, there's probably a handful of other teams you could point to where in their respective markets, fans, media have challenged the idea that maybe there should be change, right? right. Including here, like Sheldon Keefe, whenever they lose, they lose a few games in a row or they look poor or defensively unsound. It's like, well, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, what are you going to do here? 
you know, and it's like, I'm assuming this is probably the last one, but I don't know for sure. I mean, there, there's been two coaching changes now in the last week and a half with Patrick Wad coming into New York and Todd McClellan leaving L.A. Yeah, I mean, um, it's what incredible. could be? I mean, if a team just falls off a cliff, then maybe all hell will break loose. But, like, I don't – you're right. Like, who is on the cusp? Like, who has been just struggling mightily or underachieved? Because let's not forget, L.A. started, like, gangbusters yes, this year. Yes, they did. They were a they were a which powerhouse, probably, which didn't help, right? Because then it does get back to expectation. They've been a playoff team every you know the last couple of yeah. years. Really good team, had a great start. So yeah, naturally, ownership in the front office is probably thinking there's something there. Like we have a good yeah. enough team. Why is this happening? So this is not the least bit surprising at all um, that you know Todd McClellan ends up being fired in L.A. But uh, still, they they got to get it back on the track, and I believe they're still in a playoff spot right yeah, now. Yeah, they're, they're first right there wild with St. Louis. They're yeah, literally exactly. in the first wild card, and they're three points behind Edmonton. Although Edmonton's got three games in hand, yeah. But it's you know there's still lots of runway there. But it's it's I think it comes down to expectation, and there there might be something where like the levy's going to break. You know, mm-hmm. Dowdy's comments the other day were not that didn't you know, help. That, that didn't, didn't help. help. But I, I think there's something – oh, you always say it. Like, do you, you feel like there's something more to this, whether it's guys in the room. It kind of was a – I thought it was a backhanded shot to some of the younger guys, the maturity level, some of the guys in that room. What about uh, this one, Noodles? Maybe there's some, some animosity towards the idea of you blew out some good young players that helped the team be really good – to bring in some other guy that's playing like a stiff and people are pissed off about it. That would yeah. piss you off inside the locker room. Like they're just, they're looking at Pierre-Luc Dubois playing like that saying like, are you ever going to play like you want to reward the organization for bringing you in here? And we gave up two really good players and you're playing like that. What's the deal? What gives? Well, that he, would piss me off. He's got to look at himself. There's a bit of a, you know, a pattern here. Like with him. Yeah, I would say right? so. That's on the Kings. That's no, on the I, LA Kings. But we I, all called it. We're like anyone wanting to, you know, dish out for Pierre. You called it, Hayes. I didn't. I, I, said, I, I, I wouldn't I, touch him. You I said like buyer guy. beware, I, and I'm like, I don't know. He's a pretty good player. But all the only pretty good player I have in my mind is when he played good in Winnipeg, and he played good with Columbus in that bubble series against the Leafs, where he was a monster. He was playing like yeah. Eric Lindros, and he hasn't sniffed anything close to that since. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you said it. You were like buyer beware, man. You watch it bringing in that guy. Like, what the hell's his problem? Does he just want to go to play to Montreal? I'd ask him, you want to go? We'll try to figure something out. What well, is the deal? I don't do you, know. But do you think Montreal's going to put up their hand and go? No, of course not. Like right now, they're, you know. Well, like, no kidding. I, I think what it is sometimes, and it's easy to just focus him, but he is a guy that, you know, has to look at himself and say, I need to play better. And there's guys on that roster that aren't playing to their capability. Yeah, and he I think does that's have r- to play better, Noodles, because he's playing in a different situation. He's not getting as much PP time. He's right. not getting as much ice time, period. But he should be a guy that the coach is like, I have to put him over the boards every second shift because he's that good. The machine. That's what yeah. happens with other players that make that much money. They, they The coach is forced to play them because they're so good. Yeah, yeah, that's certainly the expectation. And, um, you know, speaking of Montreal, I, I, I guess you just got to bow down and say what a phenomenal presentation in terms of asset management with Sean Monaghan. They got two first-rounders for him. That is remarkable. Like, I, I have to give a full standing ovation to Ken Hughes and Jeff Gordon and everyone in Montreal for taking Monaghan off Calgary's hands, and that's what it was. It was a salary dump, and he had a lot of injury problems. Right. In Calgary. Like when he came into the league, he was a really good player. First handful of years, really good player. Auto um, 30 goal guy for a long well, had, time yeah. coming in. He, he said, uh, like in Calgary, he had seven years in a row of 20 plus goals. Yeah. Like, and, and then, like I said it today, he's only 29. Like, I, I, for some reason, my mind is like 31, 32. He's 29, but the last three years before this season, played 70 games, 50 games, and like 20. A lot of injury so problems. Injuries, but yeah. now he's healthy. And he looks good. I watched. I laid eyes on him the other night live. Like he, he looked good. And he's that's playing a, well. It's he's a sneaky playing really find. Well. Like I know, I know Chevy. It seems like he gave up a lot for him, but I am he doesn't surprised. have to answer. Uh, no, he, I hear you, but uh, I, I am very surprised that a first round pick for Sean Monahan. Like I, I personally think that that feels like an overpay, but I think why you pay it now is because it's February, and you're like, we're not going to wait until March eighth. 
Right. Like it's kind of like what Vancouver did. Vancouver paid a heavy price to get Lindholm. They paid a heavy right. price, but they wanted him. They, they didn't want anyone else in on it, and they said, we'll pay it because that's yeah. the guy we want. And from that standpoint, regardless of how I feel or anyone else feels about the price, I do have an appreciation for Winnipeg saying, that's our guy. We're going to get him. Like that's right. who we want, and we're not going to let anybody else step in and I, outbid us. And, and they I, did that, and obviously Winnipeg's a really good team, and they're certainly better today than they were yesterday. Well, and the other thing, too, is I know people get horny about first round, but, like, if that pick is 28th, like, that's, you know, that's damn near second round. You know what I mean? Like, what did the GOAT go in? 24th? Yeah, what was early 20s. I mean, but that you can spin 21. that both ways, though, right? Like, you're right, Noodles, but I can give you a handful of players off the top of my head that went late 20s, early 30s I know. that There's you like on your Corey team Perry, right and I know, but, like, yeah. that, I, I, my point being is, is that's not a top five pick they gave. No. This isn't a, a, a can't-miss, you know, prospect that, that comes in at 29 or 20. Now, Winnipeg has to hold up their bargain because if they drop in the standings, then now it's a early 20s pick or something mm-hmm. like that. But I... I I, I know people say, well, you know, the first round, first rounders and that, but you also have to take a look at where that first round is placed. Like, it's not a top 10 pick. It's not a top 20 it, where they are right now. If that's no, of a course. 27th pick, you know, it's a crapshoot. You know, there's no guaranteed top 27 prospects in the league, you know, are coming into it. So. No, that's valid. I mean, uh, that said, it, it's about, you know, what is – what is appropriate value for each individual player? Because, right. you know, the mentality is, ah, whatever, it's only the 27th pick, then you're going to get right. yourself in a lot of trouble over time, you know, if well, you're, you're I just reckless would, with how you're throwing away picks. I, I just I argue, and I know there's formulas, but I would argue there's not much difference between, just like we do our top 50s, mm-hmm. what's the difference between 28 and 32? Not much, you know, 33. Like it is, it now it's up to your scouting staff to find yep. somebody in there. And, and, you know, when we do our, our lists and stuff, it, it's our opinion. But it just, I, I know it seems like a, a steep price, but I think Winnipeg, you know, being willing to pay it and having the currency to do it and also doing it this early, you're right. Like that's the cost of doing that's business. That's what they right wanted now. to, exactly. Montreal. And what, if you're Montreal, just like if you're Calgary, Calgary, why would you make a deal today if you don't, you don't have to? Exactly. So basically, it's like if you want them, we'll make the deal, but it's a first rounder and a, another conditional you. pick. That's what it's going to cost you. And yeah. and Winnipeg decided, you know, we're going for it here. And again, it just the the Western teams just keep keep getting better and better and better. And you know, I, I guess the next one up would be Edmonton. We'll see what they do between now and the deadline. But um, yeah, well, more on that uh, throughout the afternoon. Pierre LeBron coming up. Gary Bettman spoke today. Marty Walsh of the NHLPA. Luke Tardif, your guy from the IHF. He was in yeah. town. Mr. Tardif. Mr. Tardif. He and Sutter. Gary were going back and forth about who's paying you know, the insurance and all that, as if fans <laughs> care at all. I'm watching it live. I'm like, Gary, why are you wasting your time on this? Yeah. Like, fans are just excited you're playing. They don't care There's who's paying There's been some insurance. weird things said down there in the last couple of days by a variety of different people. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> a variety it's, of there's different a lot going people. On. There's a lot going on. So Brady Kachuk coming up, captain of the Ottawa Senators, Chris Pronger coming up, Pierre Lebrun coming up, Dear Hazy B as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Quickly, corner three, bang, bang. Catch Tangerine Raptors basketball on TSN 1050. Barrett drives, snaps it down. Tonight, Raptors, Rockets, tip off at eight. Oh, Scotty Barnes. On TSN 1050. The Raptors live here. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. Don't Overdrive continues, me. brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Brady Kachuk of the Ottawa Senators and Team Hughes will join Looking us here in a few Looking forward moments. to talking. Brady seems like the kind of guy to me that wouldn't seek out a guy and then afterwards say, yeah, he's a nicer guy than I thought. I really, I, I like that guy. I could <laughs> see him saying... I hate that guy as much as I thought I did, and I want to kill him the next time I play him. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder what the odds would be on, like, a fight tomorrow night. But it's Dude. really low. But if there is one, I guarantee I you Brady Kachuk will be involved. Oh, yeah. In and there's yeah. not a ton of bad blood, like, between the players that are at this event. But I had to. I had some – it's not like I was Eric Lindros going up against Scott Stevens – but I had to play in the All-Star game with Scott Stevens, and every time I played against the Devils, 
I played with Ron Francis, so I got Scott Stevens every time. And there was just some language and some things said where it's like, <laughs> it's awkward when you're like, did you do the handshake? And you, you, I literally thought to myself, I'm like, this is the guy that wants to kill me every time we go to New Jersey. And now yeah. we're supposed to be buddy, buddy. It's weird. You know, he just says it's not the weird personal, dynamic. The like game. that guy was that guy. You, I always talk about like play for keeps. That guy, every single game, there was just no taking off one battle, one puck battle. Yeah. It's like that's just he was wired an, differently, isn't it? It like, is. Just it's wired like, differently. Yeah, Crazy. he was a monster. Like his back, like his shoulder pads were like little muffin holders, pieces yeah. of paper on top of his shoulders, and the guy was so strong. I've seen somebody break a stick over his his back, and it just broke like a. T- Kevin Hatcher used to use this like tree as a stick, and he broke it over his back, and Scotty just skated away like nothing ever happened. And as soon as I saw that, yeah. I was like, "That's disgusting." But Scott, like, he just like, skated away like it was a slash. Right. Scott Stevens had hockey head, like he, his oh. head was like a square. Yeah. And he had like a bum. He chin, was the and captain was like of a- hockey head team. Brady's on hockey head team. Yeah, he is. You think so? Well, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Keith the whole was, family. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Maybe would Matthew, say not as much. <laughs> I think Matthew, yeah, exactly. Matthew, he's the only, he's lacking when it comes to hockey head maybe a little bit. But Brady and Keith definitely have it. Uh, here he is, the captain of the Ottawa Senators, a big part of Team Hughes going into the weekend. Brady Kachuk. How you doing, Brady? Doing good, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you for doing this. We were just discussing – you know, all-star games and the awkwardness of, you know, meeting people and getting together with guys who you've been battling with throughout your career. Uh, have you experienced that at all the last couple of days? Kind of the handshake, hey, how you doing, with a guy that you tried to run through the boards like two weeks ago? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, there's sometimes a, a couple of guys like, oh, yeah, I basically went after your last game. I searched you hard last game. Like, um, but it's all... All those guys, it's, uh, I could probably speak on behalf of them and say, uh, we'll leave it all on the ice and, and just uh, be able to be together uh, off the ice. Pretty cool uh, moment of memories. Absolutely. Is that tough, Brady, where, you know, you you have an event like this and everybody, you know, it's it's laid back. Everyone wants to have fun. There's a few jokes and, and stuff, but you got to play a guy that you're playing with tonight or whatever next week, and you're, you you got to play for keeps. Like, is it you, you, it fun in, fun in games right now, but then you realize once the weekend's over, you're, you're back at it and you're going to go after that guy. Yeah, I think, uh, well, for us, there's going to be some big games coming down the stretch. So there's going to be no friends out there and, and, uh, you got to do whatever it takes to win. And, and, you know, events like this, you can get to know a guy and really like him. But, uh, at the other day, it's when you get on the sheet that, uh, both trying to win and, and you know, do whatever it takes to win. So uh, you got to put that all aside. Brady, moving forward, whenever I get in touch on Twitter with Sens Talk, the topic of you coming up and the amount that you fight uh, comes up. You talked about important games coming down the stretch. How do you balance that? Is that just what you do and how you play and you can't really control it? Or are you going to make a conscious effort of saying, I, I just got to stay on the ice more and play? I mean, I feel like a lot of it's just situational, um, you know, whether it's sticking up for somebody or, or, uh, need a little bit of, uh, you know, a turn of momentum or, or get to create a spark. I think all that, I never think about going into a game, like, Oh, I'm going to fight tonight. or I'm going to you know, fight this. It just all kind of happens naturally. And, and, um, yeah, not something I really think about. I know it's a part of you know, who I am as a player and, uh, be able to back up uh, the intensity too. So, um, you know, and if, when it happens, it happens. But, um, you know, it's, it's always doing it with the intention of helping out the team. With Brady Kachuk, I was reading some some quotes from you today, and, you know, you're, you're talking about a big second half. You've already mentioned that with us. Um, you guys are obviously starting behind the eight ball. You're well aware of that. But what, what gives you, uh, you know, so much optimism that you guys can, can stay hot and get hot and maybe make it uh, – Somewhat of an interesting playoff push down the stretch. Well, I think it's just, you know, for me, it's the belief. Um, you know, the belief I have in, in what we're doing um, as an organization, you know, starting from you know, Mr. Ann Lauer to Steve and the rest of the management to, you know, coaches, players. It's We all want it so badly. And, and I think it's shown in our last 10-game segment of, of 
you know, playing with maturity and playing the way that you know we expect to play from the start, and and you know when we do that, you know, it doesn't matter who it is, we we give ourselves a chance to win, um, up or down in the game. We um, when we play, you know, consistently in the way we want to, and um, we're a tough team to handle. So uh, that gives me a lot of hope and belief and faith that uh, you know what we're doing here, we could really prove a lot of people wrong, and and, um, and I know. My mom, you know, leading up to the mom's trip, uh, she was like, this trip's going to turn your season on. So it's been so far so good, but uh, there's still 35-plus games uh, left in the season to hopefully keep it going. How did that mom's trip go? I mean, I was a part of it there on the road with you guys, and it seems like they enjoyed themselves. And you're right, they, you guys got a little momentum coming out of it. Was, was it a situation where they were involved? Did you have them in the room? Did you have them basically in the whole process of getting prepared for the game and afterwards as well? Yeah, they are there for um, a couple meetings uh, before. Um, we had, you know, two team meals with them, so we were able to, Know, interact and kind of see where you know guys are from you know through their moms and stuff like that so it was a pretty pretty amazing trip and, and credit to um you know uh you know jordan Sums or alfie vaughn so, and uh and steve of course for you know making it so special for not just the moms but you know the players as well you did a great job does your mom make you sit in the back of this the suv when you drive around with her or is that just in commercials <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just the commercials. Yeah, she she was telling all of her friends about it. She was the real star for that one. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, it it's pretty amazing. Obviously, the Kachuk name's been around hockey forever, and obviously, your dad played in Winnipeg. You're in Ottawa. Matthew was in Calgary, but you guys are Americans, and and yet it feels like you know Canada has really really embraced you and really loves you guys. Do you do you take pride in that? Yeah, I think it's um, it's it's just pretty cool um you know for it's pretty cool how we all started our careers in canada and uh you know all was home for for me and uh you know my wife so it's uh it's been great they've you know treated us so well up in ottawa and that uh just made us feel like we're a part of the community right from day one so it's been, it's been awesome been special and and yeah it's uh you know a dream mind to to win in ottawa one day What's been different about this uh, all-star experience the, the others that you've been at as well? And, I mean, obviously you sat there with your dad when he was an all-star as well. So you've been a part of the process several times. What's been different about the, the Toronto experience? Well, I think the draft was, as, was a pretty cool idea because, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, I, I could be playing with, um, you know, guys I you know, wouldn't expect ever to play with, you know, the, you know, a couple of those Canadian guys, you know, McDavid and or even McKinnon and, and then, uh, you know, Austin. Hopefully one day we get to play together and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, best on best format. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's pretty cool to see kind of the different combos. And, and, of course, my buddy Robbie Thomas in St. Louis, we were talking about hopefully we get picked on the same team and uh, mm-hmm. be able to play together. But uh, I know it all works out. And, and uh, I thought that was, you know, something different that I haven't experienced, but they did a really good job with. With Brady Kachuk, well, we'll ask you about that because it was announced today. You know, next year there'll be a best on best Canada, U.S., Finland, Sweden, and then the NHL is going back to the Olympics in in 2026 and 2030. Um, I'm sure you've dreamt of that opportunity. Uh, if and when that happens, how, how cool do you expect that experience to be for you? Well, on a personal level, it would be um, you know a dream come true. You know, I always dream of. You know, winning the Stanley Cup, but also representing your country and and uh, be able to win, you know, a gold medal or or um, World Cup or the Four Nations, whatever it may be. It's you always dream of winning that and being able to represent your country. And and uh, yeah, it'd be you know, really exciting. It'd be an honor. But uh, I know for me individually, there's a lot of work to be done to to get there. And and um, but it'd definitely be a common dream come true. How do you guys think you stack up against Canada? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, I'd be confident, make our chances, and, and uh, I know there's a lot of you know, great players uh, for the U.S., so I guess uh, we'll have to wait and see, but uh, I'll definitely be confident. Uh, well, I think you should be. I think a lot of people would be confident. Even up here, we're buzzing about it, and it's still a year away, if not more than that. But uh, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy you know skills tonight, game tomorrow, and uh, the second half. Best of luck. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Have a good one. You got it. Brady Kachuk of the Ottawa Senators.
Be confident. Americans would be confident, as they should, they should be. be. Yeah, that absolutely. American's a damn good team. Like, They're loaded. Isn't there two goalies, Demko and Halibut? Well, Halibut, yeah. And Ottinger Halibut. would be three, probably. How about Jeremy Swayman? Or Swayman could be fourth. Yeah, or they, third or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like, they've got – they're deep. But, I, I mean, I made this argument today. Like, Aiden Hill won last year best on – best in the Stanley Cup. Like, he he's won a cup. I believe it's seven out of the last ten are Canadian. Then, you know, a Canadian could win at this – if if Stuart Skinner wins, who's 24 or 25 years old, if Edmonton happens to win the cup this year, that could be a cup winner. There yep. it is. Play, I'm like, already I'm already dreading. There's a quiz question coming oh, up me, saying, are you afraid of the Canadians' goaltending situation heading into international play? That's coming up. That is, is coming up. It's I, it's I, what's completely overriding the whole thing, though. Like, it is clearly a weakness compared to what we just stated. Like, that's four course. Americans that would be the clear-cut number one. You wouldn't even think. There'd be no debate. Does it, any of them have the, any type of Canadian passport where they can pull a Brett Hull and do the flipper Rooney? <laughs> wouldn't that be well, amazing? Well, I mean, Swayman's from last One time. of them's got to be like, I'm not doing this. I'm not playing. I'm going to play for Canada. Can't we have one of them? We need a flip. Give yeah, us we Ottinger. Flip somebody. I, but I, Doogie, I mean, look honestly, into it. See it, if any of those guys has a Canadian citizen. Like, see if any of them can do the flip. Have to. What if Vegas win, wins again, back-to-back cups, and Aiden Hill leads it to him? Uh, you know, now you've got yeah. the guy who's won twice in a row. Like I say, I, I, I'm not as concerned as everybody else. I know the sexiness. I just said, like, if Russia's not there, arguably three of the best goaltenders on the planet aren't playing in, in the best-on-best. Best. Absolutely. You know, Kucherov not there, who could win a heart this year. That's not best on best to me if, if, if they're not there. And I know that's the politics and all of that other stuff. But I, for me, like, I, I think there's – what bothers me is we're two years out and it's going to be the what-if game for the next two years. Oh, and, yeah. Well, we know, don't even know, like, who's going to be in management and who's running things. Right. Um, you know, that – I maybe maybe Prongs. Maybe we'll ask him. We'll put him on the spot 20 minutes. You know, yeah. he's got to put his whiskey empire on hold, I would guess, you know, in order to do that, to run the show. But, like, historically, it's been Bobby Clark and Gretzky and Eiserman, you know, yeah. like the all-time greats have kind of run the show, especially Olympics, Olympic Games, overseas. It's in Italy in 26. I think they're saying it's in France in 2030. They better wake some people up over in Italy and get that Italy. ring built. I was saying they might want to start building it. <laughs> yeah, you might want to snap point. out of it. Maybe a couple I, I shovels see, in the ground. But, but why wouldn't Steve <laughs> Eiserman be a guy that would get, you know, be have an inside track? Why wouldn't Wayne Gretzky and the people that have done it before? I don't be, think they want to do it again. I think it's a lot of pressure. Like, I, yeah. I really don't. I think Eiserman was like, I've, Those I've done. Those guys, do you think Stevie Y or a guy like Wayne Gretzky cares about the pressure? Those guys are the most competitive, pressure-filled people of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't care about that stuff. All right. It's just yeah. a matter of the time commitment, dealing with their own team, and do they have time and the willingness to do the work that goes into this. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm sure I, they'll honestly, be asked. It is going to be interesting to see how this all unfolds because there is going to be somebody that comes out of nowhere in the next two years that go, that guy broke through as a really good player. He's got to be on the team. Yeah, of course. I'll throw and, my name in the hat right now, boys, on the selection okay. committee process. Right. I'll there throw my name in for Team Canada. You should. Yeah. You played you Japan. Go. You played at the World Juniors, right? Yep. You yeah. played with Threat Warner. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You have international history. Oh, so you're saying I would never be considered as a guy that would be part of the selection team? I would say no. I, I'm going to say no right now because you're not in the, in senior management in a team. So what? You don't think I watch the league and know what would be a good fit that. for Canada? I'm not saying I, that. But like I'm you, telling you right now I'm putting my name in the hat. All right. Okay. Who are so you so sending the email to, though? Yeah, I, I don't know. Say. <laughs> Throw me in there. I'll be your assistant. Okay, we're, we're not all three of us. Dude, I'm not going to make it a joke. I'm just <laughs> if it's Stevie Y, I will send a note to Stevie Y and say, if you get this gig, I'd like to be a part of the process. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, right. there you could be on the management team. Exactly. Like, is that what you were talking about? Part of the selection? I thought you were talking about being the GM of the team. No, I would just like to be a, a special assistant to the general manager. Where if he wants to bounce a guy off me, I, he can call me. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's – I don't think it's 0% chance. You played in the league, right? You're well-versed. Yeah. You know all these players. You know people, You're well-spoken. Yeah. You could speak on behalf of the the team. I, I mean, I, 
I'd say you have a, a chance, and I'm curious to see how that plays out. I'm your biggest supporter. You know I'd love that. If you're you give being me some an idiot. tickets. You know, you're, act, uh, you're being an idiot. I know when you're acting and you're trying to act like I have a chance, but in your head I have zero chance. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Well, I mean, they could find a role for you. You know, I'm sure there's something they could get you to do. I, you know what my fa- you know what my favorite thing would be? I honestly and I, hate I would working want, oh. with ever, the guy that just made the horn noise. I know. You two, I hate I, all of you. Listen, it's just a, I, everything's a joke to you. I, I'm gonna say I would love you to be in the room when there was a fireable offense because you know somebody do something and you were like. That's a fireable offense. Get the hell out of here. That where I would pay money to see that because there's times when you're like, I've had enough or that person, they should not be in management. They should not be on the team. If there's a fireable offense play on the ice or, you know, a, a selection, I would like you in the room to make that. All right. Well, I we'll think see. You could do it. We'll, I, we'll I keep track. All right. Chris Pronger coming up in 15 minutes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Now, back to Overdrive with Hayes, Noodles, and the O-Dog. All right, this week we're giving away tickets. Leafs Blues, February 13th, plus throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Your final player of the day to fulfill the Leaf lineup is Dougie Gilmore. Doug Dougie. Gilmore. Call us right now at 416-870-1050. 416-870-1050. First one in with all five players named. You're going to see Leafs Blues February 13th. There's a guy who could be a management type. Doug Gilmore, I could see him running the show for Canada, right? And if yeah. he was running the show, then there's your in, right? Oh, you got to have a buddy in the front office. He would have on all three of us then. I think he you're right, Noodles. Could be a three-pack. He's a friend of the show. Friend so of the what show. you're saying is if the Dougie's not there, no other person would call me. That's not true. No. We Ron Francis, the, I, maybe. Brendan Shanahan. You get a lot of friends in hockey, like line mates, teammates. Yeah. There's somebody we're not thinking of. That's the thing. He's got somebody There's in What about somebody. this? What about this? I backstab Canada, and let's say Sundin's running Team Sweden, and he wants to bring me in, as, and I got to wear the blue and yellow jacket. Turncoat. <laughs> I got to wear the blue Gutless. and yellow jacket. Gutless. Ooh, it would be tough. All right, we'll see. Tough. Okay, Chris Pronger coming up in the next hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.